Hmm, which mode of transportation should we take? A bus, a train, a car, or a plane? Hmm, let's think about the pros and cons of each one. Okay, if you're taking the CELPIP exam, one of the questions on the reading part of the exam is called apply a diagram. Apply a diagram. Do you know what that means? You have eight minutes to answer eight questions in this part. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you exactly how you should answer this question. And hey, I would be over the moon if you would subscribe to my channel right down there. Okay, so let's take a look at our first mode of transportation. It's a bus. Okay, so the return ticket is going to cost $100 and there's no checked baggage allowed. That means you can just bring on a very small bag. You can't take a suitcase. Okay, so that's not very good. Uh, there's no bathrooms and no stops. Wow, so if you need to use the bathroom, you just have to hold it. You have to hold it. You can't go anywhere. Okay, um, and there's only morning trips. So the buses only leave in the morning, not in the afternoon. The duration of the bus trip is 3 hours and 30 minutes. Okay, so let's take a look at the train. The train costs $260 for the return ticket. And it's a first class ticket. And it has a very scenic trip. Okay, scenic means lots of nice scenery, lots of nice things to look at. Mountains, rivers, trees, okay. Uh, also, it has free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi, that's pretty good. Okay, the duration is four hours and 25 minutes. Okay, so let's take a look at the plane. So the return ticket costs $240. It has an in-flight snack, which probably isn't very much. If you've ever taken a plane, you know the in-flight snacks are just garbage. You might get a little pack of nuts or I don't know, maybe a cookie or something like this. It's not very much. That's called the in-flight snack. Okay, a free movie. Okay, that's good. Uh, airport is close to the town. Okay, so the airport that we're going, the town we're going to, uh, the airport is very close to the town. So that's good. Uh, and the duration is only 45 minutes. Okay. Perfect. Uh, now let's take a look at the car. Okay, so the round trip is going to cost $180 of gas. Um, and uh, if we go by car, then we have the freedom to explore when we're uh, in the new place. And we don't need to uh, pay for cabs. Cabs are taxis. Okay, so the duration of the car drive is four hours. Okay, so you're going to see all of these pictures and you're going to see the information about each option and then you have to answer some questions based on this information. Okay, now let's take a look at the question. So this question starts off with some, some information. It looks like this is a letter or an email. Okay, it says, Hi Linda, you will find attached our presentation file. It's ready. I've also done some research on travel. Remember, the conference is a week away and we haven't decided how to get there yet. Uh, here are our options. Okay, so buses are the blank because the fleet is old and there are no stopovers. Okay, do you know what the word fleet means? Fleet means all the vehicles in a company. Okay, so if we're talking about uh, a taxi company, then all the cars that are in the, the company, that, that's called the fleet, the fleet. Uh, or if we're talking about an airline, then all the airplanes in the company are called the fleet. Okay, so here, the fleet is old. It means all the buses are old. Uh, and there are no stopovers. Okay, so what? which answer goes in the blank? Buses are the most desirable, most flexible, 
least comfortable, least effective. Hmm. Well, we know from the diagram that uh, that it's probably this one, right? Least comfortable because there's no bathrooms. Uh, it doesn't stop anywhere, so it's not going to be comfortable. So I think that's a pretty easy option. We just go and we put that in there. Okay, then we go to the next one. The train seems more relaxed and we have plenty of time to get some work done if needed. It blank than I had expected, especially compared to the airfares. Okay, it is priced lower than I had expected. It costs more than I had expected. It is less convenient than I had expected, or it seems slower than I had expected. Well, okay, well, we can go and look at the diagram. Is it priced lower or is it higher? Well, remember, the train cost $260 and the plane cost $240. So the plane is actually cheaper. Um, so it, it can't be priced lower because the plane is actually priced lower. We're talking about the train, okay? Um, it costs more, yeah, that's true. Let's look at our other options. Is less convenient? Hmm, well, we don't really know. We're not comparing convenient. The diagram didn't talk about convenience, really. So we're not sure about this one. Um, it seems slower. Well, yeah, obviously the train is slower. Okay, but this can't be the answer because it says, then I had expected. Everyone expects the train to be slower than the plane. Okay, so that one wouldn't make sense there. So we just, we know it's this one by process of elimination. If you're not sure what the correct answer is, but you just, you can eliminate the other choices. Okay, but actually in this question, uh, we have another uh, clue. It's actually very easy because this word here, airfares. Okay, airfares means the cost, the cost of the ticket. Okay, so really only this one and this one could be the option because these are the only two that are talking about the cost. So uh, we just look at the diagram and we see, well, it can't be this one because actually the plane is cheaper. So this is the, r the right answer. So we put that in there and move to the next one. Plus the blank is far from our hotel. Hmm. Okay. Now when you see the word plus, that means uh, we're talking about the last thing we said. We're making another point. You were talking about the train, plus now this point is going to be related to our last point, okay? Plus the airport is far from our hotel. The station, the train station is far from our hotel. The bus stop or the parking lot. Hmm, well, in the last question, we were comparing the train and the airplane, right? So it has to be, uh, it has to be one of these options here. Okay, so how do we know which one is is far from our hotel? Well, in the information in the diagram, it specifically told us that the airport was close to the town, right? So it, it didn't tell us where the train station was. So we just need to use the information that we have and we need to put that in there. So, so it must mean the station is far from our hotel. Technically, all of these could be far from the hotel because the diagram didn't tell us where exactly our hotel was. But in this situation, you just need to pick the best answer, the one that fits the best with the situation, okay? And that is train station. Okay, let's take a look at another one. I really wouldn't mind blank because my car is economical. Okay, so this one is pretty easy. We're talking about my car. So what are we gonna be doing? Are we gonna be flying? No. Are we going to be taking cabs? No, because we have our car. Uh, are we going to be taking the bus? No. 
Okay, we're going to be driving. So that's easy. A lot of these are just common sense. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. That would give us flexibility to, okay, remember he's talking about driving his own car, right? So how would it give flexibility uh, if you had your own car? Okay, that would give us the flexibility to commute. Commute means to go to work and back. Well, we're going to another town and we're not going to be working. We're not going to be doing our job. So we're not going to be commuting. Uh, go sightseeing. Yep, that's a good option. Uh, go to the conference. Yes, we could take our car to go to the conference or to go to the hotel. But look at this word here, flexibility. Okay, the conference is going to start at a set time. Okay, so we don't really need the flexibility to get there. We could take a, a cab, we could take a, a subway there. There's a plane flying over my house. Maybe that's a sign that we should go by plane. Okay, who knows? Um, so having the car would give us the flexibility to... It wouldn't really give us the flexibility to go to the conference or the hotel because like I said, these things are just sort of in the regular routine of our trip. So the best answer is to go sightseeing. Having a car would mean we could go explore some cool places in and around the town. Okay, after the conference, we could go to a castle or we could go to a museum or something. Places that might be hard to get to if we didn't have a car. Okay, so that's the best option there. Okay, so then it just says, I'm looking forward to our trip. Regards, John. Okay, that's the end of the email. Okay, now it's going to ask, John and Linda are friends, are working together, uh, are neighbors, or live together. Which one do you think is right? What's the relationship between John and Linda? Well, take a look at this email. Look at how it ended. Regards, John. Is that how friends talk to each other? No, it can't be friends because you don't write an email to your friend saying, Regards, Mark. Okay, that's too formal. So we know from the email that it's a business relationship. I mean, they're probably friends at work, but they're, they're not personal friends. Okay, so do they work together? Yeah, probably. Are they neighbors? No, because neighbors wouldn't write, you wouldn't write an email to your neighbor about going on a trip. You would just go talk to them, right? The same with live together. If you live with a person, you wouldn't write them an email. Okay, so we know they're, they're colleagues, they're co-workers, they work together. Okay, so the main purpose of the event is to go sightseeing, speak at a conference, attend a meeting, or visit a doctor. Well, the question says nothing about a doctor. Uh, it doesn't say anything about a meeting, so we can eliminate those. Uh, we're not going sightseeing, although Maybe it talks about that as an option, right? Having a car would make it easier to go sightseeing. The main purpose of the event is to speak at a conference. There's another plane. I guess we should take plane to the town. Okay, to speak at a conference. How do we know that? Well, because the beginning of the email said, uh, you will find attached our presentation file. It's ready. Okay, that means John and Linda are going to be presenting something at the conference. That means they're going to be speaking at the conference. So let's take a look at the next one. John seems apathetic, unhelpful, cooperative, compassionate. Okay, so to answer this one, you need to know what these words mean. Apathetic means you don't care. Uh, unhelpful means not helpful. Cooperative, that means you can work well with someone. Okay, if two people are cooperative, that means they, they give and take, 
they're very good colleagues. They work together well. Uh, compassionate. Compassionate means that you're very uh, kind. So, well, we know it's not these two because John seems like a nice person, right? From his email, we can tell he's very nice. So, we can eliminate those two. It doesn't say anything about him being kind. Um, so, we can eliminate that one. The best word here is cooperative. Okay, he's giving her some options. He's saying, uh, which would you rather take? You know, the plane would be better for this, the bus would be better for this, the train, the car. He's not saying, we need to take the bus or we need to take the car. He's just being, he's being very nice and cooperative. Okay, so what do you think is the best strategy for answering this question? Well, I think the best strategy is just to take a brief look at the diagram. Don't look very much, just take a brief look at it and then look at the questions. Because you're not going to remember all the information in the diagram. Okay, you're always going to be having to look back at the information. Which one was cheaper? Uh, which one took longer? Okay, so don't waste time looking at the diagram first. Just take a quick look at it so you can see what kind of information is there, like prices. Okay, it's talking about um, how long it's going to take, maybe some advantages or disadvantages of each one. Okay, then start looking at the questions and then answer uh, the easiest ones if you can. And then if you get stuck on one, uh, don't, uh, don't worry about that. Just go to the next one. And then if you have time at the end, then you can look through the information again and try to find the answer. And if you're completely out of time, then just guess at the ones that you're not sure of. Okay, so let's do some homework. Another reason I don't like him is because he is nice, talks too much, wears nice clothes. What do you think? Now, when you're answering this uh, question or this part of the reading exam, okay, uh, don't overthink the, the answer. The answer might be obvious and the answer might be, um, there might only be one answer that is really clear. Okay, so don't, don't overthink it. Sometimes you don't even need any background information. You can just figure it out from the, from the answers like this. Look, another reason I don't like him, who's him? We have no idea, but we don't need to know who he is because this is very clear which one should go in here. So which one do you think should go in here? Let me know down there in the comments and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.